Oh, it's going to be an interesting one. Hello, everybody. My name is Brody. Up wise, there's Knockout Wolf. And oh boy, this video is just going to piss me off. It's going to take a long time. We're going to get through some information, some opinions, some math. Oh boy, I've actually put effort into writing a script. What is this? We're going to get a little collaboration from a friend of mine, Macaroni Principal. We'll see all that shit. And we're also going to see some gameplay. Hopefully, I can take gameplay from other people. Because guess what? I'm an Xbox player. And guess what? I don't have Zombies Chronicles yet. That kind of sucks. Uh, so you're not going to see much of me this video. Because there's going to be lots of details that'll be easier to show you visuals. And me explaining them by reading some shit. That's not going to be very fun to watch. However, here's a quick clip of me shaving. In case you feel like you're missing out. Wow, wasn't that interesting? Also, you can go and watch my Barnet Pig vs. Instagram video if you haven't yet, if you want to see my face more. I, I actually ended up injuring myself in that, so I, I feel like it's worth your time. And more people should know who uh, the man, the myth, the legend is, and, and why Instagram is stealing his videos of, of uh, fidget spinners. And that's, that's pretty much it. So assuming I do what every single teenage Call of Duty player does, and a, a rise and grind, 100, 100, and I actually get this video out for today, Today is the release day of Black Ops 3's Notorious 5th DLC, which by the way is May 16th. And so here's me slow jamming to May 16th by Lagwagon. The reason the DLC is notorious is because it's been speculated by fans for months and months, unsure of whether or not it was real, considering almost all the Call of Duty games have only had four DLC packs at most. However, when I say it's been released today, that doesn't apply for Xbox and PC players. Uh, oh no! And it was exactly like this for all the other DLC of this title, as well as the upcoming title World War II and the current one, Infinite Warfare, which nobody's really caring about. Sony have one month of the DLC being exclusive to their console. Yep, that's right, the fucking downloadable content. And, and if you haven't bailed from this video yet, you're probably thinking, well, I may as well pay attention at this point. And you're wondering, but, but why did they get it for a month exclusive? Why is that? And uh, this is because Activision love money. There's no doubt about that. Activision love money. And I'm not just saying that because I have a, a kind of personal vendetta against Activision uh, well, if you can call a salty video about them ruining the Guitar Hero and Tony Hawk franchises a vendetta, then yeah, sure, why not? But you may be thinking, yeah, but last year on Xbox had this. And although that's true, uh, some of you may be thinking, wait, did they? And yeah, they did. You just probably didn't notice because Xbox was the more dominant console back then in terms of PS3 and 360, for Call of Duty especially. But oh man, time to change people, and Sony have come on top with the PlayStation 4, which of course means more sales, and more sales means more money, and when Activision hear money, the eyes show up like dollar signs in a scene from Tom and Jerry. Now, you're probably already very aware of the fact that the new DLC is a very healthy 8-map DLC pack consisting of remastered versions of a bunch of classic Zombies maps, and it goes without saying, the Zombies is a very important part of Call of Duty, especially since World at War, and it's just gotten more popular over time. And definitely one reason why DLC packs have sold so much and still do to this day. Uh, but although you don't get to see much of my baby face in this video, I'll pass you over to a very handsome guy who goes by the name of Macaroni Prince, who will talk you through quickly about why the game mode is so important to the franchise and, and what kind of makes it different from multiplayer and makes it so unique. So now Wolf talked about the rest of Call of Duty, but I am here to talk about the true greatest part of Call of Duty. <laughs> Fucking zombies. Now zombies first started out in World at War and it was kind of a bit of an easter egg if you finished the campaign because back then nobody actually cared about quickscoping or multiplayer or anything like that. So when zombies dropped, everybody wanted to play. Everybody wanted to get to the highest round they could, they wanted to get as far as they possibly could, and they just really wanted to do well. And as Call of Duty went on throughout most of the Activision games and a couple of the Infinity Ward games, there were zombies in it. There was all the Treyarch zombies with Richtofen and all the other characters that everybody loved, and then there was Advanced Warfare. That sucked. But then Infinity Warfare came out after Black Ops 3, and the only reason I actually bought that game was to play zombies, because uh, I like the idea of killing zombies in a very movie fashion. But the nice thing about zombies is that you don't really have to pay for a lot. It's not like, you know, multiplayer where you have to pay for guns or pay for drops or pay for this and that. You can just play zombies, rank up, upgrade your guns, and there you go. That's really all there is to it. And you can just mow down zombies all day and have fun and not have to worry about, you know, oh, well, I'm not as high of rank as this person or I'm not as high of rank as this person. 
So I really kind of see zombies as the saving grace of Call of Duty because, you know, a lot more people buy it for zombies than they do for multiplayer. I know that probably sounds a little bit biased, but uh, this is my part, so fuck you. As I said, there's not a whole lot to pay for. You know, you really don't have to pay for anything except for the maps, really. You can already have all the guns unlocked. You can already have everything you can buy off the wall. You don't have to buy any extra perks. You can buy Liquid Divinium and Black Ops 3, but not many people really did that. So I kind of give that shit a pass. But, you know, Zombies just has a massive fan base at this point, so for the fact that you have to pay for so much more in Zombies in the upcoming games or even in Infinity Warfare, it's kind of sad. That's my part for Wolf's video, and if you want to come check out my channel, please do. I'm sure he'll put it somewhere. I'm totally not locked in his basement. Please, please help me. Wow, thanks Macaroni for helping out with this video. I had macaroni cheese for lunch. I think macaroni pretty much covered everything, and if you're watching this video, you're already a Zombies fan, you probably already know why you love it so much, and you're either here to be like, wow, this guy's fucking stupid, dislike, or you're here to be like, yeah, it's too expensive, or you're, you're in like the very small minority who's actually here because you enjoy my content. But if you do disagree with anything that macaroni has to say, you can go and complain on his channel. What, or you can subscribe. It's, it's, also, it's also an option. It's probably the better option, actually. Uh, but anyway, I'll leave his link in the description. Go check out his channel. Give him shit, not me. So roughly two weeks ago, Jason Blundell announced Zombies Chronicles via a t-shirt reveal on JC Backfire's channel. Yes, the unzipping of a jacket caused the Zombies community to be the most excited it's been in years. It just really goes to show how hyped people were for Zombies in Spaceland. However, despite how much hype and excitement they released, and people were like, Jesus Christ is in like two weeks, what the hell? It also spawned a bunch of questions, and two of the main ones were how much does it cost, and is it included in the season pass? The latter meaning, if I paid for the season pass of DLC for the game, which quite a few people do, so they can save a bit of money and get the DLC packs as soon as they come out without having to pay any more, do I get DLC 5 for free? And many people were extremely disappointed when being abruptly told, nope, it's going to cost $30. Now, this caused somewhat of an outrage amongst a portion of Zombies fans. If you're a zombie YouTuber, you may have noticed people get riled up in streams and the comments and things. Some of you may have not even realized this at all. And some of you may have been thinking, huh, this would be cool. And then finding out it's $30 and you don't even like the zombies that much, you're like, fuck that dude that's like more than half the price of the game and myself included i was pretty pissed at first then some people explained why they thought it was worth the money and why we should pay that amount of money for such a kind of healthy dlc pack but then from perspectives of people who don't even play the games like some of my friends who have seen that this dlc is going for this much and i'm actually going to be buying it it's like fucking cheap <laughs> fucking cheap to call of duty which is true so many sheep in call of duty i think i covered that in some other video i, I don't even care anymore just pe people are idiots people people are idiots so now we're gonna go into the real meat of the video and we're gonna talk about whether it's too expensive or if it's a fair price so before we get complex i'm just gonna summarize the pros and cons of it so first pro is that we're getting eight remastered maps for 30 dollars which means each map is gonna cost a total of three dollars 75 and now that sounds pretty good thinking like, oh, that's pretty good, but obviously you don't get to pick which maps you want. You have to pay the lump sum of $30 for the whole thing. Now, according to people I've spoken to from the US, DLC packs usually cost $15, which includes one brand new Zombies map and full multiplayer. Sometimes one of the multiplayer maps is a remastered old map, but still, it's just full multiplayer maps, which I don't think are as big and as worth the money as a Zombies pack. And myself, I wouldn't buy the DLC, I don't think, if I didn't play Zombies. However, this is double the price for effectively two DLC packs together to make eight Zombies maps. The Season Pass is $50 for four maps, saving $10, which never actually stated that there was five DLCs. So they never said, if a fifth DLC comes out, then you'll get it for free with the Season Pass. And a lot of people are arguing, well, it should have come with a Season Pass, because the Season Pass is like, the same price as the actual game, and I agree that I think it should have. However, in fairness to Activision, it only said four DLC, and you're saving ten dollars on four packs, not saving forty dollars on five packs. And it also comes with like a Divinium, which is like fifteen dollars worth, which is cool, but it, it might, I, I'm just pretty stupid. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna pay $15 for Liquid Divinium? It doesn't cost any money to make. So Activision are making money from people buying loads of COD points for Liquid Divinium and mainly supply drops, which they don't actually have to pay for at all because they say, well, although you can earn things to unlock these in the game, 
you could also accelerate that and skip that process of having to work for it and just buy it now. And although it's not as outrageous as being able to just skip to level 30 in Destiny, it's still something that they don't have to create. People are just buying it because they're too lazy and they just want stuff. They're impatient and they make so much money from people who do that. Now some cons are, it's eight remastered maps. So these are maps that we've had before. And although it takes a lot of work to remaster these maps, it's nothing brand new like you'd usually get in a DLC pack. So it's eight remastered maps for the cost of two brand new zombies maps and eight multiplayer maps. Is it good enough? Is it good enough value, you may argue? And yeah, multiplayer maps are definitely not as big as zombies maps and you can't play them for as long. Zombies games go on for so long and the replayability of it, it's, it's so high. But is it a fair trade? To find out by listening to Fair Trade by Tiny Moving Parts on Spotify. And like people said, it's just shiny new remasters of maps we've already had. So there's no new content apart from some of the sounds and things like that they've added to the game. I mean, it's going to be a cool experience. And I think the atmosphere is going to be great. However, it's all stuff that we've played in the past, you know? Finally, $30 is a lot to spend on the game after already spending $50 on the game alone if you bought it around release time or like a few months after that. And then $50 to $60 on DLC, depending on whether or not you, you bought the season pass, which in total is roughly $130 to $40. That's a lot of money to spend on one single game and the fact that this franchise releases games yearly, some people may be literally buying everything for each game every year. Oh boy, it's gonna be interesting. So now that we broke it down into a simple for and against list, let's get a little bit more complex and look at some math that I really regret doing and look at how much money Activision actually have made from this game alone. And it's common knowledge that Activision are a bit secret these days of their stats. Like they no longer like to show their total player counts on Call of Duty. I and some others personally think this is to be a method of hiding its declining player base. Like they can't keep the players up as, as much, which is weird considering they, they sell more copies each year, usually until recently. Uh, but more importantly, they don't show their sales figures online, or at least not accurate ones anyway. One example, as I'll say in the math, is that they say, well, we made this much in the first three days, but then they don't tend to release any information after the initial hype of the game and after that has died down. And let me disclaim that these figures are simply estimated. I cannot disclaim enough that how rough they are. This is not accurate. However, they've been calculated using previous figures from older Call of Duty games, comparing them to sources I've got, and I'll leave those sources in the description, but th these will be roughly in the ballpark. But when you're talking about billions of dollars, honestly being off by like 10 million, isn't much. And the reason I'm showing you all this is just to show you how much money Activision has made from this game, excluding the ridiculous amounts of money they'll make from microtransactions from COD points, like I said earlier. And I'm sure it will come clear that Activision do not need that extra $30 for this map pack, which have been hoped and waited for by dedicated Zombies fans for a long time. And I personally don't think they should be charging $30, which is more than half the price of the base game when it initially came out for remasters of maps that already exist. Now, I know how much work it takes for Treyarch to do. I'm definitely not denying that. In fact, I want to make very clear that I think Treyarch are a fantastic company. I love them. I love their games. But Activision, oh boy, it pissed me off. <laughs> oh boy, it pissed me off. And now you're probably thinking, God, this guy's salty because he hasn't got Zombies Chronicles on Xbox yet because Sony have paid Activision more. Yeah, I'm kind of pissed about that, but what can you do? We've got Black Ops 2. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Sorry, I'm an asshole. But let's go on to the maths. So according to Statistic Brain, Black Ops 3 has sold 32.5 million copies of the game since its release in 2015. This game has varied in price, of course, due to decrease in price over time and different retailers. However, Activision actually told Polygon that it made $550 million in its first three days across all platforms, which would work out at being 11 million copies if sold at $50 each, which in my mind is a fair price for a new game at release. And we all know that stores and publishers are really bad at converting dollars to UK pound. For example, $50, which Black Ops 3 would probably go for, maybe a little bit more, but let's just say $50 would go for at release. That actually converts to about £39 here. However, they'll put the price at, at least £45 to £50 because for some reason, uh, conversion doesn't really exist. So although that $50 price tag would dip over time, three times 11 million copies is just over the 32.5 million total sales of the game that statisticbrain.com said 
that Black Ops 3 had. This means the game has definitely made over $1 billion, considering that roughly 11 million made $550,000. But considering the factors such as the game lowering in price over time and, and rough estimates and things, we'll give Activision some leeway here and say it made $1.25 billion, since we can't get an accurate number. Now bearing in mind, from sales alone, that's an ass load amount of money. Okay, so EGMnow.com stated that Black Ops 1 generated quarter of a billion dollars for the company. That was for four DLC packs for a game that sold 26 million copies, which is less than Black Ops 3, according to Statistic Brain and EGMnow.com. Dividing that $250 million, which was earned from the DLC packs, with the 26 million sales of Black Ops 1, that's $9.6 million per 1 million copies of Black Ops 1. So we're going to use that as a rough figure to, to work out how much money roughly BO3 generated from DLC sales. So let's take that figure and times it by 32 million copies of Black Ops 3, which gets us around 300 million. Again, this is all rough estimates, but somewhere in the correct ballpark. So altogether, Activision have made over 1.5 billion from the sales of the game and the sales of the DLC. Let's not forget all the sheep who must buy COD points in order to unlock the new weapons. And obviously these extras aren't locked behind a paywall because you can you can earn crypto keys to unlock them in game. However, buying COD points accelerates unlocking them so much quicker, it's unbelievable. Like I said, Activision aren't a fan of releasing figures online. However, an article from Escapers Magazine 2009 stated that Modern Warfare 2, one of the most popular games in a franchise, cost a total of $250 million to make and release with 50 million going into the development of the game and a big ass 200 million dollars going towards marketing and promoting the game and releasing it with 2017's inflation that's about 280 million dollars now because of that inflation cost this makes it the top of wikipedia's most expensive games to create it was number one on the list out of all the games. It even topped Grand Theft Auto, and you just know how big those games and how expensive they must cost to make. So although other Call of Duty games must have also been around the same cost to make, like Black Ops 3, you've got to remember the Black Ops 1 from DLC sales alone made that $250 million that cost to make and release Modern Warfare 2 just from those DLC sales, it's crazy. Forget the sales of the actual game, which sold about 26 million copies, but from DLC packs. What the hell? Now obviously there's workers that must be paid and development of these games take longer now. But I'm pretty sure as a teenager son is asked if I'm complaining about a games company, that $1.5 billion plus is more than enough to create the game, market it, pay the workers a very wealthy amount, and make a fuck off big profit off of it. Uh, that bit was in caps, so I had to shout it. Oh boy, that's that's about as complex as it's gonna get on my channel. You, you can forget about seeing math again. <laughs> I was starting to think I was Mr. Raw for Waffles, Jesus. But GameRant.com sourced that the development team of COD Zombies is approximately, for this game, 400 people. Now that may be a lot of people to pay, However, they aren't working on this DLC from scratch of these maps. They already have the design of the map to work with. They are not creating zombies and how it works, the game mechanics of it and everything. They're working from a base game which already exists, which already works with zombies. They just gotta rebuild it and make it look shiny and nice. And I know it takes so much work and I'm saying they just need to recreate it, but just take my, my use of the word just very lightly because because I, I understand how much work it takes. It's just like a crazy amount. But you've got to think how little work is compared to designing and creating these new maps with crazy DLCs and working off a game with brand new mechanics, etc, etc. So the workload is not going to be as much as it was for the previous maps. So I would estimate that there will be at least 1 million sales of Zombies Chronicles across all platforms from roughly 32 million people who own a game. That's about 30 million dollars or that's about for something that was meant to be a gift to both fans who have supported the game mode and its team since world of war came out or any game after that catching up newbies with such history of zombies and just people who have been dedicated to it and waited for it for so long and just kept their hopes up and bought every single dlc pack and, and given treyarch so much money to work with and support with the franchise and the series i'm just rambling now and all i can say is activision I, I can use Activision to, to summarize things, to describe things. Activision. It's, it's got 
It's got a negative stigma these days. Oh, and, and I want to mention again about the conversion rate. Uh, no, £25, which we have to pay for the DLC here in the UK, is not the equivalent to $30. That's actually $32.30. Thanks for watching, guys. It's taken a long time to write this and work out all the maths and edit it and things like that. Do you think that the $30 is too greedy of a price tag for such a beefy DLC? Or do you think the $30 is the least that we could pay back for the recreation of the maps that we love? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully you didn't hate this video or hate me or anything and I'm not just rambling too much. Also, if this video gets 200 likes, I'll buy the DLC pack for Solar Stream on Twitter. He, he really wants it. I know he's not going to be able to buy it, so I will buy it for him if you get it to 200 likes. I know I sound like a stingy bastard for not doing it, but I'm on minimum wage. In fact, I'm on lower than minimum wage. Isn't that fun? By the way, man, if you got to this point, it probably won't be that way. It'll be like 12 likes. And maybe some dislikes. Perhaps we'll hit 200 dislikes before we hit 12 likes. And finally, if you didn't like what I had to say, don't get salty like I did when I found out the price of Zombies Chronicles. Good night, everybody. G good night. Subscribe if you want to see Zombies content like once every three months. G bye. Bye.